All right, guys, so let's drop this forward reverse open loop onto our Tweedo suite. So we've already done our physical wiring and we've built up our program here on the previous video. So we're going to go to Tweedo suite and you're going to open up a, a new project or create a new project. Then obviously you go to describe just like in the previous videos, drop in your appropriate PLC and analog card that you have there. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to program. And now we're going to set our IOs here. So our first input here is our stop push button. Then we've got our forward push button and our reverse push button. Where are we getting those? We're getting them from our diagram. So we had stop as zero, then we had forward as one and reverse as two. So that corresponds to the labeling that we've done on this diagram right here. And it looks like our outputs looks like Q, uh, Q2 and Q3 are the forward and the reverse. Okay, so our outputs are going to be below. So Q2 and Q3. So this will be our forward contactor. Okay, and then we've got a reverse contactor. Beautiful. So anytime we use these addresses now, this symbol will come up with this description of each of those guys. Uh, and then the next thing we can do is we'll go up to the top here. We'll hit apply. And then we can go straight into our program. Beautiful. Okay, so let's drop in a, a rung here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the, the stop. Then we had the forward push button. And in parallel with that, so again, to make a parallel rung, you're going to uh, left click here. Then you bring this line over till you see green and let it go. That drops in a parallel rung. And I'm going to do an examine of close there as well. So for this guy, I'm going to do my stop. And I remember that my stop is uh, input 0, 0. Okay, this guy is my forward. So I've got uh, percent input 0 0.1. Beautiful. Okay, and then the next thing I've got here is my reverse coil. So I've got percent Q03. So I'm going to drop in right here and examine if open. And that was uh, percent Q 0 0.3. And hopefully that comes up with my reverse contactor. Beautiful. So I'm seeing that my reverse contactor is off. Okay. That means that this guy right here is percent Q 0 0.2. That would be my forward contactor. And let's see, I've got one, two, three instructions. Same as this guy right here, one, two, three, and my forward coil in parallel there. Last thing I need is my output, so that's the last thing that's going to be in the rung. And again, the forward coil is percent Q02. Okay, so I'm highlighting the rung again, putting in my output, and I'm saying that this guy is going to be uh, percent Q02. Excellent, that comes up with my forward contactor. Nice. So that's everything that we need now for the, the forward contactor. What we should be able to do is just uh, right click on this, hit copy, and then I'm not sure if you no, if you tap here, you're not going to get anything. So you have to highlight here and then paste again, and it drops in the next rung. And then we've got an identical um, instruction here for the reverse contactor. Right. So if we take a look at this diagram right here, we were going to make use of the stop push button numerous times. All that does is just looks in, in the data table, whether it's a zero or in this case, a one. Uh, so we just have to change our addressing here and we'll have everything come in identical to here. The stop, reverse push button, reverse coil in parallel with that. The forward coil is an XIO and then our reverse coil. Beautiful. So let's change all those bad boys out. So the stop stays the same. This guy right here for uh, the reverse push button, I believe, was uh, two. There we go. Uh, the forward contactor is two. So we're making sure that the forward contactor is off. And then here, this will be our uh, reverse contactor, Q0.3. And we're monitoring that bit of information. Nothing out in the field yet. We're just monitoring that bit of information that when that goes to a one for Q0.3, 
then this will be true and it'll provide us another path of logic here for it to turn on a reverse contactor. Beautiful. Okay, let's double check to see if we have some issues here. So we're going to analyze the program. Uh, we have no problems whatsoever. Let's see if we can save this guy. Again, sometimes I have issues with the save. Seem to have worked there. Beautiful. Uh, and now we can go into the simulate, but we're going to work. I'm connected right up to the PLC here. So let's drop it right into the Tweedo suite. So let's go to uh, debug. Again, if you're in the shop, make sure they have the correct IP address. Otherwise, it drops the IP. I'm going to be using my serial cable. So I'm going to establish communication. Okay, transfer PC to the controller. Mm hmm. Again, it takes a little bit of time here. Let me just pause for a minute. Okay, now we're live, and now we just got to hit the run button. There we go. Beautiful. So now we're running, and now we can see uh, real time. When I hit the stop push button, both of these guys, they're the exact same instructions, so they should change state. There we go. So I've now pressed the stop push button, and so it's looking for a 1 or looking for the presence of voltage. There's no voltage at that terminal, so it's false. I'll let it go. And it will allow that voltage to get to in input zero. And now that zero input has changed from a zero to a one. So these guys are, are true. Uh, the reverse is off and the forward is off. If I press my forward contactor, then nothing's changing. If I press my reverse contactor, nothing's changing. Because we're not seeing anything out in the field. All we're doing is we're looking at the input, sorry, the output bit and seeing in this case that it is a zero. We're not actually looking out in the field because if we look at our diagram here again, we don't have any of the uh, holding contacts there uh, or normally open contacts from those contactors yet. So that's why it's an open loop in that I'm not seeing the contactor contacts change state. Okay. But if I hit the, the forward push button, then you can hear the contactor just turn on. So there's that forward push button being pressed. I'll let go of it. And you can see that as soon as this guy turned on, then it's being held with another path of logic here. This is looking to see that the contactor's output bit is going to a one and it's true. And so that provides us with another path of logic in order to turn that forward contactor on. Now, I can hit this one right here. So for my reverse push button, I can press that and it's coming in a little bit of a lag there. So there's that reverse push button being pressed. But again, it's mimicking the same as our normal forward reverse contactor in that you have to hit stop in order to go in the opposite direction. So I'm hitting the reverse push button right now and it's mimicking this right now in that the forward has been energized and that means that this guy is now open so I can't turn on the reverse contactor okay so again hitting the reverse does nothing for me I've got to actually hit the stop push button when I hit the stop push button it's going to drop this out and this will be a zero this is looking for the presence of one so that will no longer be true and it will turn off the contactor Beautiful. Okay, everything goes back to its rest state. I'll hit the reverse push button now, and then the opposing contactor will turn on. Beautiful. Nice. I'm going to let go of the reverse push button, and this is no longer true, but there's another path of logic again, in that, again, I'm looking at the data table, and when this is a 1, which it is right now, then I want it to hold on that contactor. Okay, if I physically wanted to see those uh, data tables, I can go here to my animation tables. And let's see if we can make this a little bit larger so we can see what's going on. Okay, so uh, from a previous program, I've got, I'm looking at input zero, I'm looking at input one for my stop and my forward push button. Uh, I'm going to uh, eliminate this guy out of my data table. So I believe once an animation table is uh, is set up, you can change uh, 
what it's actually looking at. So I would like it to look at input 0 0.2 as well for the reverse push button. Uh, I'd like to look at uh, percent %Q and I'm looking at 0 0.2 for the forward contactor. And then I'm going to look at uh, percent %Q 0 0.3 for the reverse contactor. Beautiful. Okay, so here we can see um, the state of everything. So it looks like the, the stop right now is a one. This is looking for a one, so that's true. The forward push button is a zero. If I hit that forward push button, then watch what happens to this value. It's gonna go from a zero to a one now. And it's not changing state. So why is that not changing state? Interesting, so I had to just click outside of the table there and it brought me out to the table and now everything is changing real time. So if I press my forward push button, it goes from zero to a one. Okay, if I hit my reverse push button, this should change from a zero to a one as well. There we go. And right now I have my forward contactor energized. So we can see that this is a one. If I hit the stop push button, then it's going to kick out my reverse contactor and this will go back to being a zero. Beautiful. If I hit my forward push button, then this will be a one briefly and then the forward contactor will remain in the one state. There we go. Okay, so we could just see the forward push button changing state quickly and now my forward contactor is on and it has changed from a zero to a one as well. Beautiful. So uh, you can create an animation, animation table and then you can drop in anything that you'd like to uh, look at in your program there. Sweet. Okay, so everything's working well. So why don't we uh, take a look at the trainer and we'll see this work in real time. All right, guys. So let's start off by hitting the, uh, the stop push button. The stop is my input zero. So you'll see that the input zero changes state there. So the light LED is off. Then when I let go of the stop, then it comes back in. So you can see the input zero changing as I hit the stop push button. When I hit the forward push button, there's my input one turning on. When I let go, that LED will turn off. And physically what's happening is that on my, uh, this wire right here, this terminal for input number one, I've got 24 volts being applied right now when I hit that push button that 24 volts is now firing on that LED. Okay, if I hit my reverse push button, that one is my input number one, and you can see that guy coming in right there. Beautiful. My forward push button just turned on my output number two, so you can see this LED right here is fired on for my forward. If I hit the stop, that, will, that one will turn off, and I will hit my reverse and output number three will fire on there. And that LED is telling me that output three is now transferring, in my case, 24 volts AC out to the field. All right, so let's hit the forward contactor. We'll see the first contactor pull on. So you just saw that this guy pulled on. I'm gonna try and hit the reverse right now and nothing happens. If I hit the stop, then this contactor will pull back out. And I hit the reverse and this contactor will turn on. Beautiful. I can hit the forward and nothing happens whatsoever. Okay, so again, I'm in the forward direction. And in this case, I'm now going to trip the overload. And when I trip the overload, we'll be able to see that the contactor stops, uh, but that we won't register anything on our program here. So let's trip that overload just by using a, a piece of wire and sliding this test to the side. You can't see what I'm doing. Hang on. Sorry guys. So we'll just move this guy to the side and you can see that just kicked out that contactor. I can hit the for forward now. I can hit the reverse and nothing happens. I have to reset that overload and then because that holding contact was still held on the contactor, it pulls right back in. Okay. I'm going to hit stop now. I'm going to put it in the reverse direction. Again, I'm going to trip the same overload and it will kick this guy out for me. Beautiful. Okay, so 
That now stops that contactor from getting current, but we can see that there's nothing registering on the screen. It's still trying to turn on that reverse contactor. So if I reset this push, sorry, this overload, this contactor will pull right back in. Beautiful. Okay, so we need to fix this program a little bit in that there's nothing that we can see when an overload actually occurs. So nothing is being shown on the actual program. And right now we're relying on the internal bit to keep the holding contact and keep that contactor pulled in. But on the next video, we're gonna do a closed loop and we're gonna make use of these holding contacts right here on the forward and the reverse, the two normally open contacts. And in addition to that, we'll also make use of the normally open contact on the overload to send a signal into the PLC. All right, guys, I think that's pretty good. That covers the forward reverse open loop. Uh, any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks very much for your patience, guys. Talk to you soon.